yeah cool another box in the mail today this one from my friends from Barcelona from Befaco directly let's see what's in here little Bifaco box some stickers and this is the chopping kinky Let's see what comes inside all of this stuff you have the, uh, the ICs well packaged in their little bag little foam IC sockets this looks like pots Here's some potentiometers and other hardware components such as headers and LEDs and such. Some knobs, nice knobs, jacks. Here's bag B for the main board, which includes some trim pots and capacitors, transistors and such. Here's bag A for the control board, which are mostly resistors and some caps. And this is bag A for the main board. A lot of resistors and diodes. You actually get a proper physical printout of the bomb and manual. Very detailed instructions on building this thing. So it's gonna be very handy. Even pictures. Nice. Enjoy your new Bifaco mods. They will indeed. And finally, here are the panel and PCBs. Nice solid aluminum black painted panel and two printed circuit boards one for the panel components and one for the circuit so let's get started building this guy thank you Bifaco the chopping kinky is a wave folding module with some very interesting capabilities I hesitate to call it a wave folder it is actually two wave folders with slightly different profiles and a switching circuit which can make for very interesting timbre and rhythmic effects it has separate inputs for each folder, but the inputs are also normalized together so you can easily use the same source for both. It works with audio as well as CV and has three outputs, one for each folder and one for the switching circuit. You can use the folders in series or in parallel, and they also work as VCAs since at the minimum setting they are silent. I've actually built a Bifaco module before, the Rampage, which I love to death and use in nearly every patch. Bifaco definitely has a particular style which is very elegant and even artistic but it's not as easy to build for beginners as say a music from outer space board where the pads are huge and there's a lot of space between components. Bifaco modules use very small resistors and generally very densely populated boards, which for me at least requires a magnifier as well as steady hands, thin solder and careful attention to avoid solder bridges and things like that. The instructions are very clear and logical, so I just follow them to a T. Start by placing and soldering the diodes and resistors on the main board. I like soldering these from above because I hate having to deal with the forest of leads on the bottom side or having to constantly turn the board over to clip the leads as I go. But I do check and touch up my work on the bottom side once I've clipped off all of the leads. Then onto the IC sockets. Make sure to take note of which IC goes where before placing the sockets, as it becomes difficult to see the silk screen afterwards. I then straighten the leads on the ICs themselves and snap them onto their respective sockets then proceeded to place and solder the capacitors. After that I placed and soldered the headers that go on each corner and finally the trim pots and board A was done. On to the control board. Again, diodes and resistors first, then the sockets followed by the capacitors. To attach the corner headers, I used my usual technique where I snapped the male headers onto the respective females which are already soldered onto the other board. Then I fit them to the control board and solder them on, thus making sure everything fits perfectly. I then soldered on the power header, minding the correct orientation, and then placed the corner standoffs. Now about the potentiometers, you must clip off all tabs except for the support legs and the actual leads. There are traces underneath some of the pots that can be shorted by the extra tabs, potentially frying your board, so this is a very important step. Once you've done that, place the pots, jacks and LEDs on the board without soldering them. Then very carefully, fit them through the panel holes and tighten the nuts before turning it all around and soldering it all up. Make sure to push the LEDs through their panel holes before soldering them on. Finally, place and tighten the corner standoff screws, snap on the knobs and power cable and you're done. Check for power shorts with your meter before you plug it in to avoid the magic smoke. 
Mine worked perfectly on Power Up. I hope yours does too. Now for the demo patch. Hey there boys and girls. Let me walk you through my Chopping Kinky demo patch. So the Vibrazo modular ether oscillator sine wave is going into Chopping Kinky input A. And the braids in what the fuck man mode, with all the dials down, so basically it's another sine wave, going into Chopping Kinky input B. Both the Chopping Kinky dials are all the way down so that no sound comes out until they receive CV into their CV inputs. They're getting CV from the rampage channels A and B, which are being controlled by the BeatStep Pro sequencer 1 and 2, which are also sending CV to the two oscillators. So basically each sequencer is controlling one voice. Each voice from the Chopping Kinky goes into my mixer and gets panned hard left and right. Now the chop output of the Chopping Kinky is going into a Vibrazo Modular VCA which is being controlled by the Ornament in Crime in Peaked Mode, so it's an envelope generator which is being triggered by my Arcade Button module gate output. The flip-flop output of the Arcade Button goes into the chop input of the Chopping Kinky and is what basically is alternating between the two Chopping Kinky channels. The arcade button is not being triggered by its internal button. It's actually being triggered by one of the drum triggers in the Arturia BeatStep Pro's drum sequencer, right? And another trigger of the drum sequencer is triggering my 808 kick drum just to act as a metronome so I don't get lost when I start doing the sequence. The icing on the cake is the joystick module sending CV to the second CV inputs on the Chopping Kinky's channels A and B so that by moving the joystick I can further modulate the folding that's happening on each channel. So I think that's it. I hope it wasn't too complicated to follow and let's hear what this sounds like. Cool.
That's it, hope you liked the video. Please follow, subscribe, and back me on Patreon so I can keep doing this. Next week we'll take a look at the Horstronic Joystick module. Stay tuned, stay noisy.